Please stand as you're able for the reading of the gospel according to Matthew, chapter 5, verses 1 through 12. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up to the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him, and then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the poor in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Let us pray together. Hear now these words from Howard Thurman. Lord, open unto me light for my darkness. Open unto me courage for my fear, hope for my despair, peace for my turmoil, joy for my sorrow. Open unto me strength for my weakness, wisdom for my confusion. Forgiveness for my sins, loves for my hates. Open unto me thyself for myself. Lord, Lord, open unto me. Amen. This morning is All Saints Sunday. It's the Sunday in the Christian year where we pause and reflect upon those who've gone before, upon whose shoulders we stand this day. The actual technical observance of All Saints is November 1. We do it unless Sunday happens to be November 1 on the next Sunday, and here we are. It's long the tradition of the church that during this service we will read the roll, the name of those who've died, who were part of our membership in the previous year, and we're going to do that in just a bit. And unless somehow our records are confused, of our membership this year, there is one. I've been a part of this church a long time. I can remember where there were a whole lot more than one and when we would read during this time of the service. And if we are in error, we will make that right. But it's not just about those who are part of a membership role that we want to remember today. Anytime we have an observance of those who've gone before in our lives, don't we not always take it to the place where our hearts most want to go anyway, the, the grief still left unresolved for one who's gone who was part of our lives before? Whether it's most recent or long, long ago, we carry with us still the need to remember and acknowledge the gift of God they were to us in the face of our journey. It could be a family member, it could be a friend, it could have been a teacher of long standing, long, long, long ago, someone who helped frame the direction of our lives. Today, we want to remember and give God thanks for their life and witness. Two of my favorite poets are John O'Donohue and David White, and they were friends. John O'Donohue died several years ago. And to that end, David White, in remembrance, writes the following about his friend that I think might resonate for you today if you're thinking about a particular person or someone that you would want to remember in a, in a God-thankful way today. He says, one of the strange but comforting dynamics in the loss of someone close to us 
is the way the conversation matures and grows for years, even after their passing. Friendship, he says, is a form of deathless conversation in which we can have a sense of the other's invisible, parallel path, even as we walk our own seemingly solitary onward way, and even receiving a larger perspective of our own in the exchange. And even, at times, he says, finding ourselves winning a point in an argument that we could never make while they were alive. Those two clearly had that kind of relationship. And there might be someone that you're seeking to remember today, too. And upon your reflection of them, you may not ascribe easily the word saint to them. But they were loved, and they loved you. They weren't perfect, but neither are we. Interestingly enough, for All Saints Sunday, the Gospel reading is always this one, the Beatitudes. That which launches the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew's Gospel, this great teaching of Jesus on which he's articulating the values and the dynamics and the characteristics of what the kingdom of heaven is. Not what it shall be, what it is now. And the people that we're remembering this morning, whoever they are in your life, they may not have been necessarily poor in spirit, and I bet you they weren't necessarily meek, not all of the time anyway. Did they hunger and thirst for righteousness? Were they merciful? Were they pure in heart? Did they do the things that make for peace, yes or no? Maybe sometimes, maybe not. But in this moment of holding these words together on this All Saints Sunday with the people that we're choosing to remember, we're wrapped up in one word that to me is the tie that binds it all together. And the word is simply this, blessed. Blessed are those. The word blessing in, in today's conversation is, is really interesting to me now. It's, it's not at all uncommon in your day-to-day -day conversation with someone. It used to be the, the, the throwaway line with someone that you were coming up to engage would be, how are you? And they would say, fine. They may or not be fine, but fine meant it was kind of the conditioned, impulsive response and it allowed you to say, well, we now have exchanged a pleasantry, and if we say nothing else to one another, we're good. Now, if you've noticed, as I have, it's not uncommon for you to approach someone, or they, you, or, and you say, how are you? And they will say, I'm blessed. You heard that? You've seen that. You've experienced that. You've said that. I'm blessed. Or, better than I deserve which I take to mean another way of saying that I'm blessed. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are those who mourn. Blessed are the meek. Blessed are the merciful. Blessed are the peacemakers. Blessed are the pure in heart. How are you today? I'm blessed. Good. Good. That's good news. The real question for the people of God is, not whether or not you're blessed, it's what are you going to do with the blessing you know you have. Recognition that you're blessed is in and of itself a good thing, but what are you going to do with it? I'm blessed. Blessed by what I have, blessed by where I live, blessed by all my, whatever the criteria that you might create that constitutes your acknowledgement that you're blessed, that we're blessed, what then does it mean? Because blessings in Scripture and blessings in this current moment of great divide and great peril and great consternation and seemingly the endless pursuit to orchestrate us bringing out our lesser angels toward each other is if you are blessed 
so what? In Scripture, it was clear. Way back in the Hebrew Bible, the function of the blessing of Abraham was for one reason only, blessed to be a blessing. Which means, to my way of thinking, that blessing is only blessing if you activate some part of your life in response to your knowledge that you have it. Do you want to know what blessing is that is buried and kept for your own? I think the current word we call it now is privilege. Awareness of blessing activated in life and how we relate to one another and in the ways in which we speak up for those whose voices have been squelched. Blessing that moves us into action. That's a thing. But a blessing that says, I got mine, good luck. No. That's privilege. That's privilege. What then shall we do, you do, what shall we be, who shall we become as a blessed congregation? Are we a blessed church? Are we? Are, are we a blessed church? What shall we do as a blessed congregation going forward? What does it mean for us to be in a place in this point, in this time, in this church's life, where we sing gladly and proudly and thankfully for everyone born a place at the table. What does that mean other than I'm at a place where that is true? If all it means is I'm currently at a place where that is true, be careful lest we become privileged by that awareness if we don't activate that awareness and how we speak to one another and how we engage the world about what it means to be open, to be inclusive, to know that in so doing, we know something more about the nature of God. It's interesting how often that word can come out of our mouths. Blessed blessing. Say the blessing. Who sang the blessing tonight? But you know, the point of a blessing is not just to, like at a meal. I mean, it kind of isn't some version of the default blessing other than thanking God for our food that we're empowered, strengthened by it, so we can now go be a blessing for someone else. We are here, you and I, at this place, at the point of our lives and how it intersects each other at this place on the corner of Peabody and Bellevue, a church that's been here a long time, a church with a rich, blessed tradition. And we give God thanks for that. But what do we do now? We're not blessed to look at it in the rearview mirror. We're blessed to look forward to what God needs us to be. So, as a church, what do we hunger and thirst for? If it's righteousness, that is living in right relationship with God, but how we live in relationship with each other, that's a blessing. If it's willing to be persecuted for righteousness' sake, or if it's willing for us to be talked about for who we are, there's blessing to be found there too. We're told to rejoice and be glad. We're in good company. Count your blessings, name them one by one. You know that old song? And we should. We should always count our blessings. And let us work from this place.
to align every blessing we know we have with an action in the world that shows God our thank you for God's gracious, bountiful blessings upon us. The opening prayer from Howard Thurman might be our guide going forward. Lord, open unto me. Open unto me all that I can be. Living out my blessings, the blessings you've bestowed upon me for a broken world. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Our focal point for these several weeks leading into this moment is uh, that we aspire to be a church where there is a place at the table for all. And in this act of commitment, for those of you present who are willing and prepared to do so, you've got a card in your, that should have been inserted in your bulletin. I invite you, if you've not yet done that, to take a moment in prayerful contemplation and fill that out. And together with your other sheet of service, if you brought that with you, and as we offer the hymn, the summons, if, as you feel led, come forward and leave these as an act of prayerful commitment at the altar. Let us sing.